copyright strike. A title. I got all this stuff here. Where is the radio? Here we go. Radio. The victim was rushed to the hospital but could not be saved. FM. So far. But no AM. Where are you AM? All right. Elon took away my AM. Well, yeah. So Elon did take away my AM radio. Uh, but um, this is a Model Y. And it's a 2022 Model Y. It's, um, it's mine. But today we're going to find out if actually if am radio actually works in this thing and i have a, a good way to do it i have a little am radio that i'm going to test in this car to see if it actually is working or is blown away by interference right here in ria's ham shack well ria's car but you know ria's ham shack all right well here we are ria's ham shack and today i'm going to talk about am radio but today i'm also going to talk about tesla so this is about electric vehicles in general and AM, but I have to put Tesla in the title because, you know, the views, people look for Tesla and let's face it, I mean, you know, which YouTuber doesn't want their video to get views? So Tesla and other electric vehicles kind of banned or they removed AM banned from their vehicles and a lot of people suspected, well, you know, it's RF interference and um, I guess... I don't know if they actually officially said that, but a lot of people suspect that it's um, they they can't mitigate the RF interference. Well, I decided to go and test. I mean, you know, being a ham radio operator and um, electrical engineer and other things associated with RF and wireless and electronics, I decided to go and test it myself. And the results might surprise you. Of course... Your members of Congress might be interested in the results of this video. So I don't know. You might want to talk to them and tell them, you know, show them some evidence and such like that. Um, they probably want to see this video. I don't know. You know, who knows? But if you do like the content, please do subscribe, like, and share. And we want to hear from you, of course. And, um, you know, this is how we roll. Ria's Ham Shack. Now, on to the testing. Like you said, building programs, Krzyzewski, Dean, Smith, Korniseka, all those guys. And then, of course, you also, during this tournament, they, teams like, uh, you mentioned this uh, during a text to me, Clemson, Vanderbilt, they're not there. You've got better teams with, with more high-profile programs in the NIT than the NCAA. I mean, I love... Meantime, 22 eastbound still have that flipped over vehicle. Actually took down a pole by Springfield Avenue. The right lane is closed. That will most... ...in southern Mexico's growing region of Puente Mezcal reached 110.5 degrees February 27th, the highest on record there. That's Deborah Rodriguez reporting 34 degrees and sunny here. We're going up to 53. So as you can see from these, um, you know, these cursory uh, captures, the AM situation on EV is actually not that bad. And actually, based on experience, well, I don't have an internal combustion vehicle anymore, but um, it pretty much mirrors what I experienced in my internal combustion vehicle. In my older Tesla Model S, which was a 2015 model, I actually had more problems with the AM reception, particularly during regenerative braking. So during regenerative braking, it would have a loud hash noise that would basically destroy all AM reception. But, you know, on this one, the Model Y with the new permanent magnet motors, I didn't experience any of that. So what's next? So next I'm going to try some um, reception in the fringe area because I live in a fringe area, essentially blocked behind a large hill. Um, Hamburg Mountain, as they call it. And I will show you what happens to the signal then. Um, and we'll see, um, you know, some more testing. America's undocumented anchorman. That's Mark Stein. Every Tuesday at 4.15 with Bo Snurgley on 77. I don't need any props. I'm looking to win in the left.
So what are my conclusions? Well, I'll tell you what. I, um, I'm really, you know, the test seems sort of conclusive that you can use AM radio in a Tesla or other electric vehicle. It's not going to be as good as an internal combustion engine. But remember the early internal combustion engine vehicles were terrible in that the spark plugs and points were basically would rip up AM radio to shreds. Whereas in, um, you know, later on they added coil and plug and resistive, resistive spark plug wires and filtering on the alternator to get that um, fixed. As far as why they removed AM, well, you know, they might say electrical interference, but I don't think that's an insurmountable problem. I definitely also don't think it'll hamper ham radio insulation. I also think that people who say that <laughs> that um, electric vehicles are huge noise makers in terms of RF really don't know what they're talking about because they're not talking from uh, personal experience. I am. And um, it is really not that bad. Of course, you have to understand that Teslas are built for the real world. And the real world, you have several things to contend with. One of them is egress, meaning that you have interference leaving the vehicle. They have to comply with FCC limits, and they have to also comply with the RF exposure standards. Now, I have a video about RF exposure, which I will link, and you can take a look about that for ham radio. It's a very interesting topic. You'll find all sorts of consumer devices now. Coming with an FCC statement about their RF exposure evaluation. And also there is ingress. So ingress means that if you roll by a large AM transmitter, a 50,000 watt flamethrower, you don't want your electric vehicle to shut down and neither does Tesla or any of the other EV manufacturers. So what you what they do is, I'm pretty sure that they shield this thing and they ground this thing sufficiently so that it's not subject to egress or ingress. And I think it actually works pretty well. Uh, takeaways from this, I don't think AM radio in an EV is insurmountable. I think there might be other reasons for getting rid of AM. Um, I can speculate, but you know, the fact is that these vehicles infotainment systems are streaming centric now, meaning that they, they are streaming first and radio is kind of an afterthought, even FM radio. For example, those with the older Tesla cars who went and got the infotainment upgrade ended up, um, when it was first offered, you weren't even offered a radio, period. Not even an FM radio. Then later on, Tesla added on an FM radio for $500. So a $1,500 upgrade, I think it went to $2,000 and you'd get the MCU2 with an FM radio. You know, so $2,000 includes the FM radio and, um, the uh, $1,500 just without the FM radio. It could also be simplification in terms of simplifying the number of systems, you know, because sometimes real estate inside of a, inside of a vehicle or any electronic device can be a, a real premium. You know, that's why Apple supposedly removed the headphone jack. You know, I don't buy this courage BS argument that they put out there. I think it was just to save space and to save cost. It could be. You know, Tesla did remove ultrasonic sensors. Tesla did remove um, data chips. They claimed parts shortage. They removed data chips in the center console. And they removed these ultrasonic sensors. My car is a 22, so it was the, some of the last ones to have the ultrasonic parking sensors. And a bunch of other things. Anyway, I hope you found this helpful. And as always, peace in the 73s.